Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lou Yan. I'm the CEO of Yan Engines, and I'll be telling you about our differential stroke cycle or D-cycle engine technology. The D-cycle is actually an incremental change from existing engines out there because what we do is we swap the existing pistons with our split piston. Our piston is split top to bottom, and we add a small mechanism that controls the top half separately from the bottom half. The top half performs the intake and exhaust strokes in the engine, which we call the breathing strokes, and that is controlled separately from the bottom half, which, which performs the compression and combustion strokes of the engine, which we call the running strokes of the engine. We tested this first in some small gasoline-powered Honda engines. And what we saw was pretty phenomenal. We dropped our pistons in, performed the retrofit, and we got a 45% increase in fuel efficiency in order to produce the same amount of horsepower. We shared this test result with the US military, and they rewarded, awarded us a $1.6 million contract. I've got so many advances in these. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> a $1.6 million contract to retrofit this vehicle called the Medium Tactical Vehicle Replacement, MTVR. They own 33,000 of these trucks. They get four miles per gallon, and it runs a 12-liter heavy-duty diesel engine. Their target for us is 20% better fuel economy. Our target price is $35,000 per retrofit we deliver. Thus far, we built four versions of the engine, and we've tested this last version 45 different times. Additional, additional testing will continue all the way through 2016 to include re reliability, robustness, and vehicle integration. Uh, earlier this year, we were approved to commercialize this engine, and we started with our passenger vehicle market along with Ford. So we're collaborating with Ford, some of the tier one suppliers that, are actually, that actually designed the Ford Focus engine called the EcoBoost, um, as well as some folks from the motorsports and Formula One industries. Um, prototype te type testing will be begin in uh, 2016, Q1. We're almost finished with design and analysis, and we'll be making that prototype uh, starting next month. We've been able to generate additional intellectual property along the process there. Uh, once we complete successful testing, um, so in Q2 of next year, we're going to look for a big round of Series B of $20 million to support these four areas of business. Advanced development to continue to develop our intellectual property, continue to commercialize the product into automotive, as well as a commercial version of the heavy-duty diesel engine for long-haul trucking to support operations for our military contract, and lastly, to continue to file and then look for licensing to OEMs for our intellectual property. That's all I have for you. Thank you. Can this retrofit technology be uh, applied to any new cars? Is this something that you have been looking at? Certainly. Um, in the short term, our beachhead would be to perform these as retrofits to prove the technology out, but um, that's why we're developing our intellectual property so that we can license to OEMs and they could um, fit that into their production line in the future, yeah. So if you look at, uh, at a new car, so the product cycle is extremely long. Certainly. So how do you sort of keep, keep the company afloat while sort of Ford thinks about put your technology, you know, in the, in the car 10 years from now? Um, that's a good question. You know, our, our current financers are in the private equity field. We've talking to some folks in the uh, in, in hedge funds. We think those they have a little bit longer view of the world um, than the pure venture capital model. Um, so, in the current term, we're looking at generating more inc income with uh, government sources, um, but then uh, you know, also with with e additional equity funding. Yeah. So, do you have any warranty issues if you do a retrofit or? that you've run into, like the trucks you're retrofitting for the military, how does the warranty work there or the no harms? It's a good question. We're not quite there yet in terms of the, how that financing would work. Um, you know, we're prototyping for them now. We'll, we'll be continuing to test probably another year with them. Um, beyond that, we're actually going to be working with Oshkosh and Caterpillar on that next uh, phase of the contract. So those are the folks that uh, built the engine and the vehicle that it's being installed with. So I'm sure that will be part of that discussion. <laughs> So uh, along the same lines, I mean, if you looked at um, the new CAFE standard regulations and how your IP could help impact that, not just with one uh, manufacturer, but, you know, across the board and all of their fleets and products? Yeah, um, certainly. We think we're part of the solution. Uh, we're potentially not all of the solution. We think that there's a mix of things out there, um, hybrid electric, electric, and we think that our decrease or our increase in fuel economy is, is certainly part of that answer. 
So that's why we're going with licensing, and we'd like to go, instead of going you know, exclusive with, say, uh, Ford or GM, we'd prefer to go with someone else like Bosch or Roush that could uh, service the entire automotive community. Yeah. If you're looking at um, a licensing model primarily as your business model, why do you need so much money? Because, well, we're, we're continuing to, uh, to prototype, and when, as we prototype, we learn more and more about the technology, more and more about um, you know, peeling back the onion of it, I, I would say. And, and so, for instance, with this automotive product, we thought we had learned a lot through the military work, but with the automotive product, we're actually fi filing additional two patents from what we've learned out of that. So, what yeah. do you think you can commercialize based on what you've seen and results that you've proven in the field? Commercialize in terms of? So. Um, so, in terms of licensing revenue, mm -hmm. okay, so we are looking at between 3 and 5 percent of the cost of the, cost of the engine, uh, so about $100 per car we would look to take in.